Good morning. Mayor Dennis Sullivan coming to you from Borough Hall. It's Tuesday morning, October the 5th at 9.30. Thought I would uh, give you a, a storm recovery update and then start a new segment, which I'd like to do uh, probably on a, on a, on a bi-weekly bi -weekly basis, give you a report on uh, last night's council meeting and, and a few other items going forward. So just in, just in terms of where we are in recovery, we have some functions uh, returning. Uh, I'd like to just highlight them for you. Uh, if you have storm damage repairs that you're doing in your home that need permits, the, uh, the fees for those will continue to be waived until October 31. Again, if you, if you need electrical, plumbing, uh, building permits, uh, please come into Borough Hall. They'll expedite uh, your application for you, and there'll be no fees assessed uh, for the month of October. Uh, hopefully, you'll be able to get uh, your paperwork done in, in a timely fashion so you can get your repairs done. We again advise people to use reliable contractors uh, so that you get quality work uh, that, that is done you know, by knowledgeable people so that the work is, is, is done safely uh, for, for your family's safety. Um, we were doing a lot of uh, water repairs. Uh, New Jersey American Water had uh, various projects going on throughout the town, and they were on hold for a while, but uh, I've been told that they have all resumed so that you'll probably see you know, some more uh, road work being done. We have a few borough projects, uh, some curbs and some uh, repaving projects, and those, again, are, are starting to ramp back up. Uh, try to get those completed before the, the bad weather comes in uh, in you know, in November, December, into the into the new year. There's going to be some rehabilitation work done on Division Street uh, as the activities there wind down, and I'll have a little bit more about Division Street uh, later on. So you might see some work being done on Division Street, uh, routine maintenance, trying to extend the, the life of that pedestrian wall. It's gotten a good amount of use uh, in, in the past several years, especially this year as things have opened back up, and we want to be sure that that surface is, is clean and safe uh, as, as we move forward into the into the planning for the new year. Uh, pickleball court is open. It's been power washed and cleaned. Uh, there is some fencing that's going to have to be repaired. We have, a comp we have some bids out now for all of the fences in our parks and playgrounds, public works facilities. We're expecting to get those bids back so we can evaluate them and work with our insurance companies on not only removing the old fencing, but uh, getting the new fencing in. We have some time constraints with that because the, uh, although the, the chain link fence can be installed at any time, we need good ground conditions to get the posts in because they have to be, you know, cemented in and anchored in. So it's our hope to get, uh, get fencing done, you know, while, while the weather cooperates with us so that uh, the fields will be ready uh, for, um, for the community and our youth uh, come spring with the, you know, with the onset of good weather. So more on fencing to come. Uh, parking enforcement uh, has, has started up again. Uh, we were fairly uh, you know, uh, conservative in issuing summonses over the, over the past uh, month, six weeks, but we will have uh, parking enforcement uh, in our lots and on Main Street. So you'll see our parking enforcement officer out there. And again, if, uh, if you are using our meters, uh, just, just read the times, they work till 7 p.m. and it, just pay for what you need, and you'll have no issues with parking enforcement. And again, the parking meters are not designed to make money. They're, they're designed to keep the turnover on those spaces so they can, they can be used multiple times for, for shoppers uh, throughout, the, uh, throughout the hours of operation. Um, our leaf pickup has begun. Remember, you have the option of bagging your leaves and leaving them at the curb. Again, please don't use the street if possible. You can also uh, bring your bag leaves down to Public Works on 5th Street. There will be dumpsters there available. And as we always have, uh, chipping operations are suspended while we're doing the leaf pickup. It's our intention to uh, start chipping again once uh, the leaf uh, season starts with the vax. And that will be hopefully in November. Once the leaf season is done, which is usually in December, we will be back with our regular chipping operation. And I'll have more updates uh, for you uh, in, in the future. But for now, we're focusing on the leaves. If you have uh, chipping materials, we ask them ask you to hold them. We'll let you know when, it, uh, when we can resume that operation. A uh, couple of public events that are coming up in the, in the, in the near future. Uh, the Weekend Journey, sponsored by various historic uh, organizations throughout the county, is gonna be held this Saturday 
from 10 to 5 and Sunday from 12 to 4. There are sites throughout Somerset County that will be open for public visitation. Uh, I'm pleased to say that once again, our fire museum on, on Dowdy and uh, this building, the Roberts Mansion, will be part of those tours. And uh, we encourage you, if you, if you want a nice, uh, fun, informative family day out on Saturday or Sunday, uh, you can start here at our sites or you can start throughout the county. Uh, if you want to start here, you can pick up a map, a brochure of the various sites. There's a lot of history right under our own feet that uh, uh, you don't have to travel to Washington or to Gettysburg or to Philadelphia for, for history. There's, there's plenty of local history here, and uh, especially uh, folks with younger kids, I would encourage you to, uh, to start to instill in them a, you know, a love of history, a love of our heritage. Again, you don't know where you're going until you know where you've been, and it's a good opportunity to see some interesting sites close to home that don't require a, a major time commitment. You can spend the whole day, part of the day, uh, look at the map, plan your visits, and I hope you enjoy that. Uh, Somerset County is, is sponsoring a cultural diversity festival. That'll be on Saturday as well. That's at 12 to 4 uh, at the Courthouse Lawn. There'll be activities, dance, music, food, games. Uh, again, uh, we're a country of diversity. We're, I've said before, we're like a quilt. Lots of heritages, lots of backgrounds, races, nationalities, creeds, religious beliefs. We all come together, and this will be a, a good way to, to uh, explore uh, cultures that you may not know too much about. Most of us know our own heritage. Uh, uh, and genealogy is becoming uh, you know, much more of a hobby for people. And uh, a lot of us know, you know a lot about our immediate background and our, our forefathers, but it's, uh, I think it's a good idea to learn, you know, learn who else is, is in your community. And when I taught at Vandiver School, we had to do a survey for the federal government on the languages spoken in the homes of our students. And this goes back about 20, 25 years, and we counted 48 distinct languages that were native to the students at Vandiver School. And I would assume that that number has increased over the, over the years since I've been retired. So uh, if, if you're uh, interested in diversity, uh, please join us at the uh, county uh, facility on Saturday. And then also on Saturday, we have our Fireman's uh, Day, Inspection Day. We'll be assembling here at Borough Hall about 3 p.m. We'll have a ceremony at the Fire Monument and then have, have a, a, a small parade down Main Street. A uh, small number of participants, but I hope that people can come out and line the streets and uh, do, do honor uh, for our uh, emergency service workers as, as they parade proudly through town uh, it's been a, a, a banner year, literally, in, in, in terms of their response to, uh, uh, you know, to our needs. And I'd, I'd love to see the streets, uh, you know, packed with people uh, cheering on our first responders. They, they work hard while we sleep. And uh, I would encourage you to come out and just let them know that, uh, that, that you appreciate their efforts. That's uh, Saturday, 3 o'clock here at Borough Hall. Finally, the Downtown uh, Summer Alliance is planning some Halloween activities. Um, we want kids to have a safe environment. Uh, there's still some question about how trick-or-treating would happen in neighborhoods because of the, you know, the pandemic, the, the variants that are still out there. So the, uh, the merchants and the DSA are, are planning some activities downtown, and I'll have more for you uh, as that gets closer. You can check the DSA website. I believe right now it's scheduled for Friday the 29th. Of, of October, I think three to seven. So it would start after school is out. So be a good, uh, safe alternative to the traditional trick-or-treating. As far as trick-or-treating in your neighborhood's concerned, I've gotten a few calls about that. And as we did last year, uh, we're pretty much leaving that up to an individual decision. You may not want to have a, a communal bucket of candy for kids to come you know, and pick up. You may want to spread it out on a table or or just forego it this year, make a donation to a charity in place of the candy that, that you might have purchased uh, for the neighborhood kids. And again, we're going to leave that uh, up to individuals to determine what works best for their family. But as an alternative, you, you can come downtown. Uh, we hope to have a good number of merchants uh, participating in, uh, in Halloween downtown. I believe it's called the Spooktacular. So we look forward to uh, you know, providing an environment for your kids and family that can be organized and safe with protocols established by the, by the CDC. 
Right. What I want to do now is add a little segment about a summary of last night's council meeting. We have a few uh, interesting events uh, that, that took place. Uh, we have two Eagle Scouts in town uh, from Troop 83 uh, under the leadership of Mr. Larry Cleveland that are going to be undertaking some uh, beautification and restoration projects. First one's going to happen at the Culver Street World War I monument, which was underwater during the recent storm. Uh, one of the uh, prospective Eagle Scouts is part of his requirement uh, for a community project, plans to uh, restore that monument. He's going to work with uh, some professionals to, to uh, clean it, um, scrape it, repaint it, seal it, and then uh, clean the, uh, the bronze tablets uh, to make sure that it, it's in excellent shape for the 11th of November, which is Veterans Day. So that's, uh, we look forward to working with the, with the Eagle Scout on that one. A, a second perspective, Eagle Scout wants to take a look at the Davenport tot lot where the ABC blocks are, and he wants to do some renovation, restoration, cleaning of that as well. So I commend our scouts. Um, uh, I, I believe only about 5% of all scouts make it to the rank of Eagle. And one of the final steps in their Eagle recognition is a community project. And the Borough Council was, uh, was extremely receptive to these projects, uh, approve them. So uh, you should see some, uh, some uh, heroic work going on on those two sites over the next month or two there. Again, there's gonna be some weather and time constraints. Uh, so if the, if the projects are not completed, uh, you know, by the end of this good season, they will continue into next year. But both scouts assured me they would try very hard to get, uh, get those projects complete. And again, I commend not just the Eagle Scouts, but all of our scouts for all of the work they do throughout the year. Uh, they, they, they have taken, you know, undertaken a lot of public spaces, uh, adopting them as, as an ongoing project. And uh, they, they do great work. And if you have a child in scouting, thank you for sharing them uh, with the borough. Um, as you know, we, um, one of our fire engines was uh, somewhat submerged on Cliff Street during the storm. It's still being evaluated as to the, the permanent status of the engine. But in the meantime, we have negotiated with the city of Scotch Plains to purchase a reserve engine from them. The borough council approved that purchase last night. The Board of Engineers, and Fire and Maintenance, and our administration have worked hard with our counterparts at Scotch Plains to, to make that happen. Uh, that engine is here. It's being housed in an engine company on East Main Street, and it will, it will function as a reserve engine. Uh, regardless of the ultimate fate of our damaged engine, It'll give us the ability to have a full fleet, and while we while we decide what uh, what to do with the that the, the engine has been damaged, it uh, it was scheduled for a retrofit and or replacement. That was the oldest of our of our of our fleet. So depending on what the, the final outcome of the estimates are, we'll make some decisions as to whether it should be restored at a you know not insignificant amount of money or if the, um, if the fire department should start the process of planning a new, a new engine. But for the meantime, we have a full fleet and we'll be able to respond um, not only to our own needs, but to our mutual aid commitments as well. So we welcome that truck and I, I, I assume it will be, uh, it will be on display during the, uh, uh, during the uh, fe festivities on, on Saturday. Uh, finally, uh, and a very significant step, and I'm, I'm pleased to announce uh, formally that Last night, the Borough Council unanimously approved uh, all of the documents needed to begin the construction of the emergency services facility on Gaston Avenue. As you know, we purchased the site several years ago. Right now, it's fenced off and, and sitting waiting for the next step. So the, uh, the documents that I will be signing uh, later on this week uh, with the authorization of the Borough Council include the leasing of the property to Stonewater, a uh, very well-known national company from Virginia who has a, a, a great background in constructing uh, buildings of public use. They were chosen during a, a long selection process uh, among uh, various applicants that we felt would, would be best positioned to do the job. So all the documents have been signed. We will lease the land to Stonewater. They will pre prepare the design documents, uh, start the construction, at, at, the, uh, at the end of the construction, which is estimated right now about two and a half years. And that, that's, that's, you know, maybe not, you know, 100% in stone because I know that building materials are hard to find right now. I know a number of people have been doing projects in their home 
and they're having trouble getting plywood and plumbing and various kinds of materials. But right now we're looking at about a, a about a 30 month project from shovel in the ground to completion. Uh, at that point, the borough will lease the building from Stonewater for a period of 40 years. And at the end of that 40 year lease, the borough will own that building outright. Uh, it will uh, eliminate the need for us to bond that money because if we were to borrow the amount of money needed for that project, it would be next to impossible for the town to ever borrow money yet again for equipment or road repairs or sewer projects. It would also limit our Board of Education if they ever needed to go out and borrow money for long-term uh, school board debt and borrow debt are all lumped together. And uh, the more we would, we would borrow as a separate entity would harm the, the ability of the other group to, you know, to, to borrow money for their needs. So with a lease, we can pay that off on a yearly basis. The money that we'll be recouping through our pilot programs will be more than enough to cover the cost of that lease so that there should be no uh, impact on taxes. And again, the pilot projects that we have in the grant, we have uh, three or four that are currently paying. And within the next two years, we have another three that, that will you know, be contributing. And uh, we have very conservative estimates that the, the dollars that will be coming into the borough by the year 2024, when this facility is scheduled to come online, will be more than enough to pay the lease. So it's, it's an exciting time. I, I spoke last night about the investment in streets and gas lights and sidewalks back in the early 19th and 20th centuries. Um, we built a new high school 50 years ago, and this is the, the next in a series of important investments that we feel are, are paramount to keeping our community at the forefront of central New Jersey and of the state. So I thank all the individuals, our, our administrative staff, our professionals, our consultants, our volunteers who had a big part in, in getting us to this point. I, I commend the Borough Council for their, for their uh, fortitude in, 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 in allowing me to sign these documents. It's a big investment in our future, but one that I know will, will pay off uh, for public safety in the long run. Well, that's about it for today. Uh, my plan is to come back uh, in about two weeks. I'll have a, a report from our planning board, which will be a week from tomorrow. Then our next borough council meeting is scheduled for the 18th of October. So I will probably be back with you around the 19th with, a, with an update on uh, where, where we are and where we're headed. In the meantime, enjoy the fall weather uh, and I will be back with you soon. Thank you.